Welcome to today's demo of Bridge Operator Console for Cisco Unified Communications. Today we will be playing Melissa Went, extension number 7601. You will also notice the Cisco IP Communicator soft phone in the upper right with extension number 7012. This is connected to user Susan Larson, the user we will transfer calls to and park calls for. To begin, let's look at the layout of the screen. Bridge Operator Console is similar to a Microsoft Office application. At the top of the screen it contains a call control ribbon. The heads up display shown in black will indicate which of the current calls the user has selected. This call will respond to actions in the call control ribbon as well as be the default call for right click transfers. When there is only one active call in the system, that will be the default selected call. When a second call arrives, the user can toggle between calls in the My Calls box. Extension groups listed below can be created in a number of different ways. Global extension groups visible to all users, and local extension groups created invisible only to the operator. Extension groups can be created via Active Directory automatically based on department, company, or location. They can also be created from departments using Axel and Cisco Call Manager and Users. To select an extension group of users to view, simply click and see the extension names change. To return to your default extension group, simply click the Home button. Location objects below are things you may frequently call or transfer calls to that are not users on the system. Oftentimes, these are used for conference bridges or hunt groups. Parking lot information at the top will display all of the calls parked on the system. Later in this demo, we will explore advanced parking controls and features, including the Park For control, giving all operators visibility of who the call was parked for, as well as who parked the call. The green search box will return results to the users in the system, and hovering shows the search criteria of first last name search, telephone number search, department search, title search, or searching by extension number. Examples of this search would be first name search, last name search, department search, or an extension search. Users may limit the search to the users that are currently on the screen by toggling the search global control, as well as search names only control. Three tabs are visible here. This is the main focus of where the operator will spend the majority of their time in the application. The first tab, Extensions, will show the other users on the system. These will change based on the extension group or the search entered. Things that are visible in the Extensions display panel are the user photo if one is available, the user name, call status which can reflect on hook, off hook, hold, or forward and do not disturb statuses. You see, as we toggle Do Not Disturb on Susan's phone, within seconds that will be displayed within the console here, showing the current Do Not Disturb status. This can be useful before transferring a call. Users will also be able to integrate with our Exchange Connector and see calendar-free busy activity. Here we can see Doug Johnson is in a meeting, and with a single click we can see when Doug Johnson will be available. Hunt Group status is also displayed. Users will be able to see the status of user hunt group login and logout. This can be valuable for monitoring other users in the same group and deciding whether or not, for example, if there are three users logged in, Melissa Went can go to lunch. Chat status is also available. This can be tied into Cisco Jabber and Microsoft Skype for Business or Link 2013. It will present real-time status for all users based on the user's instant message status. Extension call status call time are also available, as well as title and department. User notes is the final column. Sticky notes appear where there are user notes added. As we hover, we can see personal notes and shared notes. Opening the box allows editing. Shared notes are visible to all users on the system. Personal notes are only visible to their corresponding operator. When learning the application, it can be convenient to have a key displayed explaining what the icons mean. This is available here. The key contains keyboard shortcuts, call status icons, chat status icons, 
other status icons and hunt group status icons. Toggling collapses the key. Call transfer can be completed in a number of different ways. Since Bridge Operator Console acts as a remote control for your Cisco desk phone, all commands and functions will be interchangeable with a handset, headset, or the operator console. Some examples of call transfer variability include drag and drop. Upon dragging and dropping the first time, we are presented with a screen for options. Selecting the Make this the default action next time box will allow users to select the call function they want the drag and drop to perform, by default. This can be changed again in the settings, but allows users to drag and drop without the window returning. If you would prefer the pop-up, simply do not select the toggle box, but instead select your desired function, in this case, a blind transfer. We can follow up with the transfer and redirect the call back at ourselves if Susan does not answer. When Susan answers, the transfer follow window will go away and we will be able to see Susan's status in our bridge operator console. The double click function is also an option when transferring calls. Calls can be answered by double clicking them and can be transferred by double clicking the intended recipient and selecting transfer. A similar window will appear upon doing so, again with the option to make the double click perform a listed function by default. In this case, let's select Supervise Transfer. The call goes on hold and Susan is out dialed. Once the call is completed with Susan, we will be able to speak with her and announce that she has a call from Pepsi Cola. At this point, Susan can decide what she would like to do with the call. If she would like to complete the transfer, we can simply click the option and the two will talk. If for some reason she cannot take the call, we can abort the transfer, transfer to her voicemail box, park the call for her in the general parking lot, or park for her directly with the Park 4 control, which will notify the recipient. In this case, we will select Complete Transfer. The call leaves our heads-up display and is now completed on her desk phone. Another call method is the freeform transfer. We will double-click in the heads-up display to answer the call, and we will open the freeform transfer window. Here we can enter known user extensions and then click Transfer Call. The most powerful call transfer method in Bridge Operator Console is the right mouse click. It can answer calls, but upon right clicking a user we are presented with all of the options in one place. This includes blind transfer, supervised transfer, transfer to voicemail, the option to open and transfer to any active directory numbers, such as a mobile or home phone number, and many other options. Again, we will select the blind transfer, and we see the process completes itself in the same manner. Keyboard shortcuts are also available. If the user prefers to use a keyboard, these can be done with a programmable keyboard or the combinations provided as defaults. So let's do this. We will click Control plus to answer the call. The cursor, as you see, is in the search box. So when we search for the one user we would like to transfer to, we can then use Control T to transfer the call. Parking Calls is easy with Bridge Operator Console. It works with your existing Cisco parking lot. To park a call, we can simply click the Park button to send the call to the parking lot. To retrieve a call from the parking lot, we simply double click. You can also drag a call to the parking lot if preferred, and the number can also be dialed to take the call on your phone as well. In the parking lot itself, you have the options to color code calls that have been in the system for a certain duration. The options will include yellow, orange, and red based on the time the call has been in the system. Progressively changing as the call remains in the system, it will first become yellow. As the time escalates, the call will be turned orange, and then finally red, giving the operator visibility management over the call part time. The major drawback to parking a call is that it requires a follow-up process. The user must either instant message, 
email, or page a user or a group of users about the park calls so that they may be taken by another user. Several years ago, we at Bridge Communications developed the technology known as Park 4. Park 4 utilizes the existing technology available in the Cisco handsets to streamline the second part of the parking process. We can park a call for Susan Larson using our Park 4 functionality. The call will be parked the same way in the Cisco phone system, but we will send a message to the user's Cisco desk phone showing them that they have a parked call. An audible notification will also be heard on the phone. They can then see where the call is parked, who parked the call, and who the caller is. Taking a call out of park simply requires lifting the handset or pushing the dial button. The call leaves the parking lot and is connected with Susan Larson. Bridge Operator Console contains a number of ways to find advanced information about users. One example would be the Active Directory Info Transfer. Opening this displays all the numbers the user has in Active Directory with the ability to transfer calls and call those numbers. Sometimes we may need to find a person who is similar to a particular user. Perhaps they are out of the office today and they would like to find someone with a similar set of skills to help the caller. In this case, we can use the Related People function in Bridge Operator Console. Related People will find the user's manager, assistant, secretary, people in the same department, people sharing the same title, and the team members sharing the same manager. This can be useful for finding someone like Derek Reiser. You have the ability to transfer, supervise transfer, and call any of these users, as well as see their related people. Slide 5 begins. In addition to messaging on a call using our Park 4 functionality, Bridge Operator Console also provides phone messaging and paging functionality. If we select Susan Larson and we select Message to Phone, we are presented with a box where we can type a message to Susan Larson. This can be useful if Susan is on the phone. In this case, we'll send a message to Susan right now, letting her know that she has a visitor at the front desk. The message is delivered almost instantly to Susan and does play an audio chime on Susan's phone. If Susan would like to reply via her phone, she can. If she would like to view a history of messages she has received while she was at lunch, for example, she can do that. If she would like to acknowledge receiving the message, she can do that as well. Doing so delivers a notification to us that Susan saw the message. If we continue the conversation, the program detects that the messages are being sent to a phone and switches to that format. Voice paging is similar. We can right click on Susan and we can select page to phone. When we do this, Susan's phone goes into audio paging mode. You will notice this does not use any of the phone lines on the phone. Rather, the software that is built into the Cisco soft phones and IP phone handsets. If Susan is on the phone, this will be presented as a whisper page in her ear. If she is not on the phone, it will open up her speakers and mute the microphone. When done, we can click stop paging. Both of these capabilities can be extended to group levels where we can either text message or voice page a group of users. We will discuss that later. Bridge Operator Console provides two separate types of external address books for users. First is the My Address Book, which is a personal address book for a particular operator. He or she can enter numbers here or have them pulled automatically from Microsoft Outlook contacts to be dialed or transferred to. Users can also send emails, change pictures, conference these users with a current call. Categories can also be created. The global address book is a set of data visible to all users on the system. The phone book is stored on a SQL table and can be populated via third-party programs or via the import mechanism available in our software. 
These records are similar to an Active Directory record structure with many fields, including 10 custom fields. Our search box searches all over all these address books, showing you instantly the number of matches in each field. By toggling over them, you can see the ones that match. Bridge Operator Console contains a number of advanced features. These include the ability to see hunt group and queue statistics, log in and log out of hunt groups, exclude users from view, and manage those exclusions. Bridge Operator Console can also show you the location of a call for geographic call distribution. Bridge Operator Console can also allow users to forward another user's phone Use the DTMF keypad, which will show the user's local phone, and allow them to push buttons on it. With an add-on from OnPage, Bridge Operator Console can send your messages to pager devices. Bridge Operator Console can redial the last number of the user dialed. Bridge Operator Console also provides a mechanism for notifications on 911 or any other dial match notifications. Messages can be sent either via email, chat, or messages directly to phones in the event that, for example, a user would have dialed 911. Bridge Operator Console supports many add-on functions. Three will be discussed in this demo. The first being the add-on for the Microsoft Exchange Connector. This provides calendar detail information about the users, as well as automatically importing the Microsoft Exchange user's contacts into My Address Book. To view a user's calendar in a meeting, you would simply click the icon. Any other users can be accessed by right-clicking the user and selecting the Extension Properties Calendar. When we do this, we are presented with the user's Exchange Calendar. This can be configured for a blind mode, seen here, where we do not see a subject or message body or you can turn either of those options on to provide users more availability and detail if so desired. By default you will get a free, busy, tentative, or out of the office color code. You can also see calendar information for future weeks by using the directional arrow keys. The second add-on is the group messaging and paging. This extends the functionality we showed earlier with our right-click message to phone and page to phone. Groups can be defined for paging and texting on the server, or users can use any of the existing extension groups as well by right-clicking and saying Page Groups Phones. You will see all the users in that group now have their phones in voice paging mode. We can say whatever messages we like and stop paging. The functionality to send a message to a group of phones is the same as it is to a single phone and will be delivered in the same format. Users can also, with the group messaging and paging option, park a call for a group of calls. Each phone will receive a notification for the parked call. When one user picks it up, the other users will be notified and the message removed. The third add-on we will discuss is the Bridge Operator Console Medical Connector. This allows our Operator Console to interact with any hospital, HL7, EMR, HMR system. You can simply search for patients the same way you would search for any users, and using something like related people will allow you to see their primary care physician or their primary care technician. You can transfer calls to these users as well as to the room directly. Please discuss this with our sales team if you would like further information or an interactive demo.